Welcome to Layer of the Alchemist, where we discuss all things heavy metal and hard rock on today's episode, why I think CDs may have a revival, why CDs may come back. I'm going to come to the defense of CDs here, all right? I made a video already why I said there isn't going to be a revival, and I sort of said the reasons, the negatives towards CDs. I'm going to give you some of the positives here. I know I have a lot of listeners. The CDs are their main format that they listen to. So I think that that's really cool. I still have a lot of CDs too. It's not like I don't listen to CDs. I've got a CD player set up here in my room. Most of my listening when I'm in my house is vinyl. When I do, I, I have lossless streaming. So I'll be honest, I don't reach for my CDs uh, that much anymore. But here's some reasons why I think uh, CDs can make a comeback and should make a comeback. All right. Uh, number one is sound. Now, in the last video, I said, well, lossless streaming will do away with it. Well, not everybody streams. So for some people, and I know a lot of my viewers, uh, the sound quality is important for audiophiles. And CDs can sound fantastic. Uh, the dynamic range on them is, assuming it's mastered properly, is is amazing there's literally no noise going on noise floor when it comes to cds as opposed to vinyl with the snap crackles and pops and tape hiss from cassettes so there's a lot of really a really well mastered cd can sound absolutely fantastic and it's really sort of the pinnacle of of sound you know i know that there's high-res audio and stuff like that but as far as the human ear and everything like that uh you know cds give you pretty much everything you could want from a well-mastered uh, cd when it's done properly cds can be absolutely amazing so if you're somebody who doesn't like streaming doesn't want to deal with that and all that cds are going to be a great option for you but you want that high uh, audio quality and another aspect of uh, sound is that you know there's CDs they're going to be collectible for uh, different masterings and stuff like that you know early pressings of the CDs before the loudness wars before things got remastered that's personally what I collect with my CDs is I try to get like early runs that have a lot of dynamic range on them so that's another uh, sound quality thing all right, number two, and this could be a big one, is the price. You know, I, I hear more and more people, I complain about it all the time, that the price of vinyl just keeps going up and he's getting more and more expensive. You know, I did a review of the Scorpions Rock Believer album and the double vinyl for that was like $37 or something. Uh, and you're just seeing more and more, $25, $30, $35 for, you know, one record. And it's... That's pricey, man. You walk in, if you buy two records, you know, it can be walking out with a $50, $60, $70 dollar bill sometimes. And it's getting it's getting really expensive. The quality control of vinyl is another thing. And so with CDs, assuming it's you can basically look at a CD. I don't I don't have one here. Actually, I do have one in front of me. You can look at a CD and it's pretty easy to figure out what's going on by like, assuming it's not scratched up. You can look at it and go, okay, as long as it's not scratched up, it's going to play and it's going to be fine. It's not going to degrade in quality or anything over time. Records is a lot more difficult to tell what you're getting when it comes to used records. Uh, a record that looks in great condition can still be really noisy. CDs, assuming it doesn't have scratches on it, you're good to go. Uh, CDs, it was easier, I think, for people to sort of keep them in better shape. So the the price of them is way more. I got off on a little bit of a tangent there. <laughs> the, pri the, the price of them is, is way easier to deal with, like especially in the used market. There's a vinyl place near me that has a good selection of CDs. And yeah, three to five, two to five dollars, you know, buck CDs, classic rock stuff you can get for a dollar or two. It reminds me of when I first started collecting vinyl. I was able to get all my standard classic rock stuff for like two or three bucks, Boston and Peter Frampton and Meatloaf, Bat Out of Hell. I bought all that stuff for two or three bucks and was in great condition. Now that stuff has tripled, quadrupled in, in price, but you can still go in and you can get 
bat out of hell on CD for a buck. And it's, assuming it's not all scratched up, it's going to sound just as good as the day the guy that opened it up and, and played it. There's no, you know, sound quality uh, uh, drop off or anything. So that's kind of exciting. I sometimes like now being able to go in if I do dig through and find four or five CDs and I can walk, I can get four or five CDs for 20 bucks. You know, it feels like I'm getting, getting more for my money. So in a lot of ways, I think vinyl might outprice itself and people are going to start, you know, being more excited and, and being drawn towards CDs because you can get these uh, used for way cheaper. All right. Number three is storage. You know, for some people, myself <laughs> included, you know, vinyl takes up a lot of space and there's something to be said about, hey, if you've ever had to move, <laughs> I had to move and move all these records and it was it was a nightmare. You know, CDs, I put all mine in these uh, these paper sleeves and uh, it's just so much easier to deal with, so much easier to store them. It takes up a fraction of the space that vinyl records do. So that's a consideration for some people, people that move a lot, people that are in small apartments and stuff like that. So that could be appealing to a lot of people. Okay, uh, the uh, number four is the novelty of it. Okay, once enough time passes and once there's a generation of uh, people who don't know anything about it, 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 it becomes, you know, exciting, like, oh, CDs, what are these? And there's this, you know, sort of retro hipster quotient to things a lot of times where what's old and what's old is new again, you know, type thing. And everything seems to be cyclical. So, you know, there's eventually a time when, uh, you know, when CDs will, uh, when CDs will be a novelty again. And I think that that will attract a lot of people back to them. So, okay, there you go. There's four reasons why I think CDs could have a comeback to, oh, and another thing is, is that a lot of times CDs, you can put more music on them. They have, here's would be my number five. They, a lot of times they had bonus tracks, unreleased things got tagged on to remasters of CDs. So I think that there might be something to that. And although I complained about the booklet size the last time, you know, if you're somebody who has better eyesight than me, a lot of times there's a lot of information and you can get quite a bit of stuff going on inside a booklet. So, you know, that could be appealing too. But all the extra stuff that you can put on a CD, the unreleased stuff, stuff that's never been released before that hasn't been put on vinyl like there's that weird sort of period in the 90s uh, when a lot of stuff came out and certain genres you know maybe there's something that's only available on cd so okay there's some in defense of the cd for you why i think a cd revival could happen so let me know in the comments down below if you guys think cds are going to make a comeback why you think cds should make a comeback uh, if you got an argument why they shouldn't can leave it here, maybe in the other video that I made. Okay, till we see you next time. Make sure you stay heavy, stay metal.